I want to do a little comparison of the capital market line and the security market line. Um, students sometimes get confused over these two because they look fairly similar and they have sort of fairly similar names. Now, both of these graphs show the trade-off between risk and return. Now, the capital market line shows the trade-off between risk and return for a portfolio that consists of the risk-free asset and the market portfolio, which is a diversified portfolio that theoretically consists of all risky assets. It's the line from the risk-free rate that is just tangent to the efficient frontier. And I'll discuss that in a minute if you don't know what the efficient frontier is. There's also the security market line, which shows the trade-off between systematic risk and return for an individual asset or portfolio and it's the graphical depiction of the capital asset pricing model so sometimes you hear these terms used interchangeably so let's take a look at a graph here or two graphs actually on the left i have the capital market line on the right i have the security market line so you can see that here we have expected return we have expected return on the y-axis for both and we have some measure of risk on the x-axis for both. For the capital market line, we have sigma, or standard deviation, which is a measure of total risk. Over here for the security market line, we have beta, which is a measure of systematic risk. That is the risk you can't diversify away. So how do you get the capital market line? Well, you have this efficient frontier. That's this red curve here. The efficient frontier consists of all portfolios that have the highest expected return for a given level of risk, for a given standard deviation. Risk is bad. Expected return is good. So for whatever level of risk you take, you'd like to have the highest expected return. Or likewise, you could take a given level of expected return and you'd want to have the lowest risk so you'd move this way. So what we know is is that there's a linear relationship between two assets here and so if we have this risk-free asset and it's over here on the y-axis it's the y-intercept term because there's no risk right so the standard deviation is zero so if you draw a line from here to any portfolio You'll get, you'll get a straight line. We call it a capital allocation line. The best you can do is to be tangent to this efficient frontier. That's going to give us the steepest capital market line. Ideally, you'd like to be up here, but those portfolios don't exist. So this is the best you can do. Over here, what we have is a different approach to looking at risk and return we're looking at systematic risk or the risk you can't diversify away and the idea there is that we don't want to reward you for taking risk you can get rid of or alternatively maybe a way to think of it is when you add a security to your portfolio you don't care about its individual risk you care about the risk it brings to your portfolio and that's measured by the beta for example gold Gold tends to be um, not a great asset by itself. It doesn't have a great return, especially if you're holding you know, gold coins, but it tends to move, in many cases, in the opposite direction from how the rest of the stock market moves. So usually when there's some crisis, people will run to holding tangible assets like gold. So while it might be a lousy asset by itself, it may be a really good asset to add to your portfolio because it tends to reduce the risk of the portfolio. So what you use the security market line for is to price individual risk and return for an individual security. Okay, Over here, the capital market line basically makes an argument that everybody should buy the same portfolio you ought to buy an index fund. Let's take a look at the equations here. The capital market line equation says the expected return of this portfolio is the risk-free rate plus 
the standard deviation of the portfolio times um, the expected return of the market minus the risk-free rate divided by the standard deviation of the market. Its measure is total risk or sigma. Over here, the security market line says the expected return for security I is equal to the risk-free rate plus beta I times the expected return of the market minus the risk-free rate. And it uses systematic risk or beta. Systematic risk or beta is actually a measure of volatility relative to the market. The definition is the covariance between the returns of the security and the returns of the market divided by the variance of the returns of the market. It turns out that the beta for the market is equal to 1 because the covariance of the market with itself is its variance divided by its variance and it equals 1. So the intercept term for both of them is the same, the risk-free rate, but the slope for the capital market line is the sharp ratio for the market portfolio, the expected return of the market minus the risk-free rate. So this is a risk premium divided by a measure of risk. Over here, the slope of the security market line is the market risk premium, which is the difference between the expected return of the market and the risk-free rate. So let's take a look at a couple of extra pictures here. So when you move along the capital market line, you're still buying the same portfolio, M. Some combination of M, the risky portfolio, which consists of all of these risky assets held in their market value proportions, and the risk-free asset. You get to different points by how much of M you buy. If you want to be conservative, you'll lend money. That is, you'll buy, for example, treasury bonds. That's your risk-free asset. You'll put some money in treasury bonds and some money in this risky portfolio. At point M, you're putting all of your money in the risky portfolio. And over here, if you want to get past M, you borrow money to buy more of M. So you borrow at the risk-free rate so that you can buy more of this market portfolio. Over here on the security market line, when you move along this, it's relative to beta. Uh, the beta for the market. So the beta for the market is equal to 1. That's That means that your security has about the same volatility as the market. If the market goes up 1%, you would expect your security to go up by 1%. Securities to the left that have a lower than 1 beta, okay, smaller than the market, tend to be safer. That is, when the market goes up by 1%, they'll go up by less than 1%. Okay? These might be utilities, or they might be food companies. Why? Because when the market booms, people don't use that much more electricity. They might use a little bit more, but it doesn't have much impact. Right? If the economy tanks, you still need electricity, you still need to heat your house, you still need water those sort of things. Over here to the right of um, one or the beta for the market are things that are riskier, things that tend to move up and down more than the market. So if the market goes up by 1%, this stock might go up by 1.5%. Um, okay? Riskier. Okay? Perhaps airlines or auto companies. When the economy is good, People will get on planes and fly for vacation. Where there's more business travel, right? People buy cars if they get if the market goes up and they get a big bonus at work and things like that. So movement along here means buying a different type of security here: riskier securities, here safer securities. All right, and let's take a, a look at a couple more uh, pictures here. So back to our capital market line. If you're under the capital market line, we're talking about inefficient portfolios. We're talking about portfolios that have a lower, say we're right here, 
at this point, you could have the same level of risk, but a higher expected return. So there's no reason to buy this portfolio. Up here above the capital market line, these portfolios don't exist. If they did, you would purchase them, right? If there was a portfolio right here, you could take the risk-free rate and draw a line to that portfolio. And what would you have? You would have a line that was steeper, right? Had a higher sharp ratio, had a better risk return trade-off, but these don't exist. Over here with the security market line, you can have things that are under and over the security market line. Under the security market line right here means the security is overvalued. That is, for the level of risk you're taking, you're getting too low a return or you're paying too high a price. For um, securities that plot above the security market line, they are undervalued. So for the level of risk you're taking, you're getting a higher expected return than you should, which means that the securities underpriced or undervalued. So I hope this clarifies at least a little bit the difference between the capital market line and the security market line.